Jai Jai Shi Chi Chani Jai Chinanda Jai Dui Te Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Om Mo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Mo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Mo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Lord Brahma, thus seeing the personality of Godhead in his fullness, was overwhelmed with joy within his heart, and thus in full transcendental love and ecstasy, his eyes filled with tears of love. He thus bowed down before the Lord. That is the way of the highest perfection for the living being, Paramahansa. And seeing Brahma be present before him, the Lord accepted him as worthy to create living beings, to be controlled as he desired, and thus being much satisfied with him, the Lord shook hands with Brahma, and slightly smiling addressed him thus. The beautiful personality of Godhead addressed Lord Brahma, O Brahma, impregnated with the Vedas, and very much pleased with your long accumulated penance, with the desire for creation. Hardly am I pleased with the pseudo-mystics. I wish you good luck. O Brahma, you may ask for me, giver of all benedictions, all that you may desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction is the result of all penances, is to see me by realization. The highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abodes. And this has been possible because of your submissive attitude to the performer of severe penance according to my order. So Lord Brahma has attracted the mercy and attention of the Supreme Lord. Who has revealed himself to him. And that is the way of God consciousness through re revelation. The Lord is revealed reveals himself when he's pleased by the loving service attitude of a devotee. These things are more easily understood at the present time through Krishna's incarnation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This incident with Lord Brahma and Krishna was in the beginning of creation. And Lord Krishna revealed himself in Vishnu form, surrounded by opulence, goddesses of fortune, a very majestic, powerful form to Lord Brahma, which is exactly what Lord Brahma needed for the service that Krishna wanted at the time. And Lord Brahma is fully satisfied to see Krishna in that form. 
It's always according to time, place, and circumstance. Krishna's incarnations. At the present time, the incarnation is Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's Krishna himself appearing in the mood of separation from Radharani. It was the perfection of devotional service. His highest abode, Goloka Vrindavan, the abode where the most intimate and loving exchanges take place devoid of opulence and majesty. So when we see Krishna in his different incarnations, we can see them from that angle of vision. It's the same Krishna. It's on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. It's revealing his majesty and opulence to Lord Brahma, who is the creator of the universe. And the same Krishna. When we understand Krishna's actual position, if you know our good fortune that we're able to approach Krishna through Lord Chaitanya in the path to the most relishable relationships with the Lord are opened up. For us, the most fallen, which is inconceivable. But that's how Krishna works. He can do anything. It's important for us to understand that so that there's no misconceptions about the actual position of Krishna. So one of his specialties is to take the least qualified and show his magic. That's Krishna. <laughs> so this is at the beginning of the creation of the universe where Krishna is revealing a very majestic, opulent form to his servant of whom an inconceivable task is being required to engineer and create entire material universe. So this is the this is the pastime here with Vishnu and Brahma. O sinless Brahma, you may know from me that it was I who first ordered you to undergo penance when you were perplexed in your duty. Such penance is my heart and soul, and therefore penance and I are not different. I create this cosmos by such penance. I maintain it by the same energy, and I withdraw it all by the same energy. Therefore, the potential power is penance only. Read Prabhupada's purport, you might understand a little bit more about what this penance is. 
per point by Prabhupada. The penance by which one can see the personality of Godhead face to face is to be understood as devotional service to the Lord and nothing else. Because only by discharging devotional service and transcendental love can one approach the Lord. Such penance is the internal potency of the Lord and is non different from Him. Such acts of internal potency are exhibited by non attachment for material enjoyment. The living entities are encaged in the conditions of material bondage because of their propensity for overlordship. But by engagement in devotional service of the Lord, one becomes detached from this enjoying spirit. The devotees automatically become detached from worldly enjoyment, and this detachment is the result of perfect knowledge. Therefore, the penance of devotional service includes knowledge and detachment. And that is the manifestation of the transcendental potency. One cannot enjoy material loosely propensity if he desires to return home back to Godhead. One who has no information of the transcendental bliss in the association of the Lord foolishly desires to enjoy his temporary material happiness. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it is said that if someone sincerely wants to see the Lord and at the same time wants to enjoy this material world, he is considered to be a fool only. One who wants to remain here in the material world for material enjoyment has no business entering into the eternal kingdom of God. The Lord favors such a foolish devotee by snatching all that he may possess in the material world. If such a foolish devotee of the Lord tries to recoup his position, then the merciful Lord again snatches away all that he may have possessed. By such repeated failures in material prosperity, he becomes very unpopular with his family members and friends. <laughs> in the material world, family members and friends honor persons who are very successful in accumulating wealth by any means. The foolish devotee of the Lord is thus put into forcible penance by the grace of the Lord. And at the end, the devotee becomes perfectly happy, being engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, penance and devotional service of the Lord, either by voluntary submission or by being forced by the Lord, is necessary for attaining perfection. And thus, such penance is the internal potency of the Lord. So penance is there one way or another. Penance being non-involvement in material enjoyment. Giving up the desire to enjoy material energy, material nature with knowledge and detachment. But it doesn't mean necessarily going off and living in a cave and eating dry leaves <laughs> it does mean giving up the desire to enjoy material energy. It 
Lord Chaitanya's special mercy is that the time, place, and circumstance. Practically, there's nowhere a person can go and be completely uh, free from the influences of the Kali Yuga. Even you go off into the woods somewhere, there's an airplane, or there's chemicals in the water, <laughs> or they're spraying something in the sky, or there's nuclear and radiation fallout from something. There's practically nowhere that a person can go to perform that type of penance, or that type of austerity. It's not possible in this age because the atmosphere is so contaminated on the entire planet. This is just a fact. So the penance now is although one may remain in their duties and in their services, and in relation with family members, associates, work associates, and the type of friendly and cordial dealings one has in the course of everyday affairs. One gives up the desire to enjoy The material platform. And at every opportunity, with everyone they meet, they try to share love of God. That's the penance. By chanting, by glorifying, by discussing, and remaining detached with knowledge. This is the path of bhakti yoga for this age, as given by the incarnation, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. as we can see from Prabhupada's purport. This is devotional service. Hearing, chanting, remembering, offering prayers, becoming a friend of the Lord, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and offering everything one may have in the service of the Lord. One cannot, however, be engaged in the penance of devotional service without being completely free from all sins. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, only a person who is completely free from all reactions of sins can engage himself in the worship of the Lord. Brahmaji was sinless, therefore he faithfully discharged the advice of the Lord. Tapa, tapa. And the Lord, being satisfied with him, awarded him the desired results. Therefore only love and penance combined can please the Lord, and thus one is able to attain his complete mercy. He directs the sinless, and the sinless devotee attains the highest perfection of life.
I create this cosmos by such penance. I maintain it by the same energy. And I withdraw it all by the same energy. Therefore, the potential power is penance only. But Brahma said, O oh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, you are situated in everyone's, every living entity's heart as the Supreme Director. Therefore, you are aware of all endeavors by your superior intelligence without any hindrance whatsoever. In spite of that, my Lord, I am praying to you to kindly fulfill my desire. May I please be informed how, in spite of your transcendental form, you assume the mundane form, although you have no such form at all. There's a nice section here in a purport by Prabhupada. He discusses about desire. Since in the previous section, we're hearing from Prabhupada, he says, you have to give up the desire to enjoy material situation. So how exactly does that work? The Bhagavad Gita confirms that the Lord is situated in everyone's heart as the witness. And as such, he is the supreme director of sanction. The director is not the enjoyer of the fruits of action. For without the Lord's sanction, no one can enjoy. For example, in a prohibited area, an habituated drunk puts forward his application to the director of drinking. Considering this case sanctions only a certain amount of liquor for the drinking. Similarly, the whole material world is full of many drunkards in the sense that each and every one of the living entities has something in his mind to enjoy and everyone desires the fulfillment of his desires very strongly. The Almighty Lord, being very kind to the living entity, as the Father is kind to the Son, fulfills the living entity's desire for his childish satisfaction. With such desires in mind, the living entity does not actually enjoy, but he serves the bodily whims unnecessarily without profit. The drunkard does not derive any profit out of drinking, but because he has become a servant of the drinking habit and does not wish to get out of it, the merciful Lord gives him all facilities to fulfill such desires. The impersonalists recommend that one should become desireless, and others recommend banishing desires altogether. That's impossible. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> no one can banish desires altogether because desiring is a living symptom. <laughs> it's a symptom of a living entity. It's the desire. It's a symptom of life. It's simply the desire has to be purified, has to be, with knowledge and detachment, redirected so that 
the desire is takes one back to Krishna, back to Godhead. So. Without having desires, a living entity would be dead. <laughs> it's very funny. Do people seriously practice desireless? It's, it's death. It'd be dead. There's no life. There's no desire. There's no life. <laughs> You just want to think about it with your common sense just for half a second. Who would, who would practice such a path? This is suicide. They want to commit suicide. They're so miserable because the desires are unfulfilled. But yes, well, that's, that's, that stands to reason. If desire is a symptom of life and trying to satisfy the desire in the wrong way so the desire is never satisfied but and doesn't go away and is never satisfied oh, that's a terribly frustrating situation it's horrible horrible situation doing everything that a person could possibly do to satisfy the desires and they're not getting satisfaction terrible. Of course they want to kill themselves. But the problem is not desire. The problem is they're trying to fulfill the desires in the wrong way. And that's the problem. So, therefore, living conditions and desire go together. Perfection of desires may be achieved when one desires to serve the Lord. And the Lord also desires that every living entity banish all personal desires and cooperate with his desires. See, that's a problem. <laughs> Because the Lord is the source of all creation and is situated within the heart of the living entity. So you can never get away from the Lord. Plus, we're eternal. There's no way for a living entity to ever be extinguished. No way. We're eternal living beings, eternally. wandering throughout the material cosmos, life after life, birth after birth, body after body, sometimes an animal, sometimes an insect, sometimes a bird, sometimes a germ. And when we get to this human form, it's a great opportunity. to engage in devotional service to the Lord. One doesn't lose one's identity by this robot saying here that every living entity banish all personal desires and cooperate with his desire. It doesn't mean that a living entity loses their individuality. What it does mean is
they become one with the wood in the sense that to love, the relationship is perfected. It's like sometimes we see something similar in a material situation, which is a reflection of the reality. In a loving relationship, the lovers become like one. And the husband and wife they become like one person. To a great extent, each one knows what the other is thinking, feeling. In each one's happiness comes from seeing the other one happy. And in that way, they both become happy, ever increasingly. Now, in a material situation, it's perverted. And but we can understand by looking around us, because it is a reflection, that these things do exist perfectly in relationship to the perfect person, free from the contaminations of desires to overlord material energy. So that's the understanding that when Prabhupada says here, the Lord also desires that every living entity banish all personal desires and cooperate with his desires. That's the perfection of personal. That is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. Brahmaji agreed to this proposal, and therefore he is given the responsible post of creating generations in the vast universe. Oneness with the Lord therefore consists of dovetailing one's desires with the desires of the Supreme Lord. That makes for the perfection of all desires. The Lord, as the super soul in the heart of every living being, knows what is in the mind of each living entity. And no one can do anything without knowledge of the Lord within. By his superior intelligence, the Lord gives everyone the chance to fulfill his desires to the fullest extent. And the resultant reaction is also awarded by the Lord. So Lord Brahmaji is entering into this loving relationship with the Lord by performing devotional service as given to him by the Lord at the time was penance. That was the prescription. That was the devotional service at the time, the beginning of the creation. Lord Brahma's austerities and penances was devotional service, because that was what was given to him by the Lord to perform. That's what the Lord wanted from him. And he surrendered. And that was his devotional service. And the Lord was pleased by that, revealed himself in his Vishnu form for the task that Brahma was suited for. Brahma also, within his heart, wanted to create. That was his desire, was to create. That's who Lord Brahma, that's Lord Brahma, every universe, and there are many universes, unlimited universes, each has 
a personality of the Lord Brahma. There's the Lord Brahma in each universe. Just like in every family, there's a father. He is a representation of Krishna, Lord Brahma, for the purpose of creation. So that is a very strong desire in his heart, is to create. It's so strong that he gets to create an entire universe. A man has a desire to create. He creates a family. He may have a big family or a small family. So there are many universes, and each has its Brahma. It may be a big universe, maybe a little universe. It has to be a very small universe. <laughs> One of the smaller ones. <laughs> But that personality of Lord Brahma is there. Sometimes it's described Krishna himself comes as Lord Brahma to do the creating because it, that's what has to be done. Yeah. So. In spite of that, my Lord, I am praying to you to kindly fulfill my desire. May I please be informed how, in spite of your transcendental form, you assume the mundane form, although you have no form at all. And please inform me how you, by your own self, manifest different energies for annihilation generation, acceptance, and maintenance by combination and permutation. Now this is the same Krishna that has appeared as Lord Chaitanya. And we see in the past times of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna's incarnation is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was asked questions, or actually, because of the mood of Lord Chaitanya appearing as his own devotee, he wasn't being asked the questions like Lord Brahma is asking Krishna directly what he needs to know to execute. services that Lord, Lord Krishna is desiring, the services of creating the universe. He's asking directly, and Krishna has appeared in a very powerful, opulent, majestic form to him. In the past times of Lord Chaitanya, because he's appearing as his own devotee, in the mood of separation from devotional service, he's asking the questions. The answers to which need to be known so that what he's desiring can be fulfilled, made known to his servants and devotees. It's the same thing is going on. It's just it's a different incarnation. If we can capture the essence, the essence is always devotional service and a loving relationship with the Lord. That's the essence. That's the transcendence. And the Lord uses different means according to time, place, and circumstance. The beginning of the creation 
the devotional service with penance. In the incarnation of Lord Chaitanya, that penance takes the form of hearing, chanting, and remembering past times of the Lord. And is especially recommended chanting the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's the tapasya for this age. One beads individually and together congregationally. Time, place, and circumstance, different needs, same essence. So these are the questions that Lord Brahma is asking at the beginning of the universe. O Master of all energies, please tell me philosophically all about them. You play like a spider. It covers itself by its own energy. And your determination is infallible. Please tell me so that I may be taught in the matter by the instruction of the personality of Godhead. And may thus act instrumentally to generate living entities without being conditioned by such activity. not just knowledge for knowledge's sake. Brahma's inquiring. He's, he wants to know so he can perform his service in full knowledge. Famous conversation, Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Roy When Ramananda Roy is asking Lord Chaitanya, er, Lord Chaitanya is asking Ramananda Roy. And Ramananda Roy is saying, The questions that you're asking me, you are the source of the answers. And I'm answering by your, like a rain cloud pours water. So Ramananda Roy is like the rain cloud, but where did the water come from? Water came from the ocean. Because this is the pastime of Lord Chaitanya. He's appearing as his own devotee. So he, Ramananda Roy is like the rain cloud. So Lord Chaitanya is asking the questions to make it rain. <laughs> but he's filling the rain cloud at the same time. And the questions involve what is the highest form of service, which is the desire of the Lord to make that available. This incarnation is making that available, the highest form of devotional service. So in that conversation, the questions are, and the answers begin, Ramananda Roy starts with systematic ordering of society. Lord Chaitanya says, no Lord the liar, and that everything should be performed for the service of the Lord. Yes, that's good, but keep going. And eventually, After a series of questions that go deeper and deeper into the mood of the Lord, we reach the mood of Radharani and the residence of Vrindavan. We reach the ultimate of all, Supreme Abode of Lord Krishna. 
devoid of any opulence and majesty, where the Lord relishes intimacy, emotions in their pure form, loving exchanges. Because that is the desire of the Lord in this incarnation of Lord Chaitanya. Now, going back to the beginning of the creation, the Lord's desire is to populate the universe. Which is done periodically, systematically, to give facility to living entities to go through the process of returning back home, back to God. There are always some that desire to enjoy separately from God. So they must be given facility. So this is the facility to work out those desires because that's the nature of the Lord. And the nature of love is it's not forced. Love must be a conscious decision. Otherwise, there's no meaning to love. Must always have that choice. To accept or reject. So Brahma is asking the questions that he needs to know. To fulfill the desire of the Lord in that incarnation of Vishnu at the beginning of the creation. Same Krishna. Oh my Lord, the unborn, you have shaken hands with me just as a friend does with a friend, as if equal in position. I shall be engaged in the creation of different types of living entities, and I shall be occupied by your service. I shall have no perturbation, but I pray that all this may not give rise to pride, as if I were the Supreme. This is so sweet. <laughs> this is so sweet. <laughs> Personality of Godhead said, Knowledge about me, as described in the scriptures, is very confidential. And it has to be realized in conjunction with devotional service. The necessary paraphernalia for that process is being explained by me. You may take it up very carefully. All of me, namely my actual eternal form, and my transcendental existence, color, qualities, and activities, that all be awakened within you by factual realization out of my causeless mercy. Brahma, it is I, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who was existing before creation, when there was nothing but myself. Nor was there the material nature, the cause of this creation. That which you see now is also I, the personality of Godhead. And after annihilation, what remains will also be I, the personality of Godhead. Hmm. 
O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. Know it is my illusory energy and that reflection which appears to be in darkness. So when the Lord says, all there was was me before the creation, everything that's going on in the creation is based on me, and after the creation is dissolved, then it'll just be me again. It doesn't mean that Krishna is all alone. Krishna's never alone. He's always surrounded by his associates and his servants, his devotees. But there, it's a different um, realm. It's not dependent on the material creation. It's not dependent on material universes, beyond the material universes. Indeed, when Krishna says, all there is is me, inconceivable to us in our present situation. The personality of God and his supreme abode being non-different. And Krishna's associates and companions are also Krishna. Different energies of Krishna. Actually, everything is Krishna. <laughs> Material creation is also Krishna, but it's a temporary form. Krishna is all pervading. That's why he says, What appears to have substance without me has no substance. It's an illusion. Whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. No, it is my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. Hey, Krishna! O oh, Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of it. I think we're going to take a little break here. Take a little break. Jai. Glory to the Acharya. All the boys of the 